competency frameworks in Credential Engine define required skills, knowledge, and abilities people need for success within a given context. These frameworks highlight the outcomes and set of required skills that people should have as a result of earning a credential or to effectively fulfill a role, including problem solving, communication skills, leadership qualities, technical skills, and so on. The framework list view can be used to find frameworks you've previously created in the system and frameworks that are available to be edited. At the top, you have a search bar, which you can search for terms that are in your frameworks. You can also filter the search term by clicking the filter button on the right side. It'll open a menu on the right, and you can limit your search term to specific parts of the framework or competencies. Using the X at the top right, you can close this filter and sort menu. And each item in the results list will have number of items displayed, published date, approved date, created date, last modified date, publisher, and editable, if, it, if the item is editable. Not all items will have all of these details, but what details are available will be displayed. At the top, we have three buttons, one to create a new framework from scratch, one to import a framework from various document sources and URL sources, and an option to crosswalk two frameworks. The crosswalk tool aligns two frameworks by building relationships between competencies within them. The first import we'll go over is importing a framework by copying and pasting text from a document. From the frameworks view, click the import framework button. You'll arrive on an imported framework screen with some options at the top that are file import, remote server, paste text, and URL source. We're going to start with paste text. As you'll notice on the right side, there's some contextual information about the specific import workflow you're using. It gives us some helpful information and instructions. Looks like we should copy and paste from a document, give the framework a name, and make sure each competency is on a separate line. One space indicates one level of indentation in the hierarchy, and we'll see a preview on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and close this contextual feedback, and I'm going to copy my entire framework that I have over in this document on the right, everything short of the title. I'm going to go ahead and close this and expand my window. Okay, I'm going to grab that name real quick. Paste the name here. And now I have a preview of the framework that would be imported on the right side. I'm going to expand my text box a little bit. And for this copy paste import in this specific framework, I know I want everything nested under domain one, non-clinical operations. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the instructions that said, add one indentation to nest items in the hierarchy. And for this, I'm also going to remove one A because I know I want to add that as coded information later. So I'm just going to delete that on the left side, add one space for each competency. And as you can see on the right side, the framework to be imported is updating. And you might have just noticed that if we do one extra space, it'll indent at another level in the hierarchy. Okay, looks like I have everything nested, and it looks like I have one stray item down here because of the new line. We'll delete that, and now everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And now the framework has been imported into Credential Engine's Credential Publisher. Next, we're going to import a framework 
from a CSV. From the frameworks view, we're going to navigate again to the import framework page, and we're going to select file import. On the right side, we'll see some contextual information again and some supported file types. We're interested in CSV, so if I click CSV, it'll tell me a little bit about the supported formats, provide some templates and examples. In this case, I already have a framework or several frameworks that have been prepped in an Excel sheet, which I exported as a CSV. Uh, this is using the CTDL ASN format. I'll go ahead and close this. Now, as you can see up here, I have an Excel sheet and then some ready to upload exports that I have done. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these ready to upload and you can see the Excel sheet example down here. The original data source and the ready to upload with a template. I'll drag this over the files to upload. It should show the name when you do this. I'm going to go ahead and click process files. Now it's telling me that there are four frameworks and 210 competencies detected. This is just some helpful information to make sure your file is set up correctly. So that looks good to me. I'll go ahead and click import. And now it's going to process this CSV and create the, the frameworks. Since this file had four frameworks, it's not going to immediately open any single framework. It instead will take us to the frameworks view and show us these four frameworks at the top. You can see information technologies, computer science, information technologies AS, versus BS and data analytics BS. I'll go ahead and open one of these just to show you the imported framework. And that is an import using a CSV. Next up, we're going to import a framework from a URL source that has a CTDL ASN import available. From the frameworks page, I'm going to navigate to the import framework page. And I already have URL source selected. As you can see on the right side, the contextual information says, you know, the URL source of the CTDL ASN JSON LD graph, you can import published frameworks by URL. Scrolling down, it shows us some examples. There are four available. I'm going to select one of these examples for this demo. We're going to go ahead and select basic skills and you can see that the URL has been pasted into the URL import text box and now we'll just go ahead and click import framework. And in this case the framework's already been imported. I'm going to go ahead and hit confirm because I do want to import this again right now. If the framework is not already in the system, that message won't show up. On this import workflow, we're actually going to be displayed with a preview of the framework to be imported, much like with the paste text workflow, except for in this case, there's a lot more information available because this framework is live somewhere out on the web. So I'm going to go ahead and just review this information, make sure it's correct before I hit done editing and import the framework. There are labels available, coded notation, canonical URL, credential engine URL, and CTDID. CTID. If something were incorrect here or I wanted it changed, I am able to make some edits in this workflow. Scrolling down, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm done editing. Now that I'm done editing, it's going to show me the same view but without any editing options, just to show me what the framework will look like in the system. In this case, there's some options up at the top. If you're performing repeat tasks, you might want to import another framework, export it from here to various formats, or in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click View and Editor to view it in the editor. And now we can see the framework is available in the editor, and that is how we import a framework.
URL source that is CTDL in CTDLAS in format. The last import we'll do for this demo is a case import using a remote server. From the frameworks view, I'm going to select import framework and I'm going to select remote server. The right panel contextual help tells us that if we know the URL of an IMS case repository such as OpenSalt, we can import published frameworks from that repository. Scrolling down, we have one example that we can try out, opensalt.net. I'm going to click that and the URL is placed in the text input box for the remote server, remote server endpoint. Clicking connect to endpoint, it's going to show us the available frameworks at this endpoint. I can select all or one. I'm going to go ahead and select one, norm web's depth of knowledge, and click import. In this case, I've already imported this framework, so it's going to let me know that I can overwrite it. In this case, I do want to overwrite it. If the framework is not already in the system, it will not provide that message. Now I'm able to review this information to make sure it's correct, much like with the URL import. I can see this framework has some more information, such as broad alignment relationships on specific competencies within the framework. I can click edit to make last minute changes if there are inconsistencies or incorrect data. And I can also move items in the hierarchy. In this case, I'm going to select Done Editing, and now I can see the preview of the framework that will be imported, and I'm going to go ahead and click View in Editor, just to view it in the Editor, Post Import. And there is our framework imported using the Remote Server Import Workflow. Now that we've imported some frameworks, I'm going to show you some tools in the Framework Editor. I'm going to go back to my frameworks page, which is the available list of frameworks, and I'm going to select one of the frameworks I recently imported. In the framework editor, there are three view modes, low detail, moderate detail, and high detail. Each view mode has specific properties within the framework details at the top and the competency details within the framework that show. So right now on low detail, we can see we have competency label, competency text is the one without a label, competency category, encoded notation. In the framework itself, we can see we have information technologies, which is the framework text or competency text, and a description. If we click on moderate detail, we'll see now we also have publisher name and publisher. And let's see if anything new showed up in competencies. It looks like moderate detail didn't add any new properties to our competencies, but if we click high detail, now we can see URLs and IDs. So we see canonical URL, credential registry URL, and CTID. Clicking a detail view that's already selected, we'll unselect it and go to the lower level detail view except for in the case of low detail, which is always shown. And that's how you change your view modes of properties in the framework editor. Next up, we'll look at editing the framework properties of a framework. With the same framework open, at the top I see the name of the framework, now I'm just going to increase the details here. If I want to edit the details that I can edit here, I'll, while hovering over this framework prop or framework object, on the right side a little edit button will appear. Clicking that will open the framework editor modal, and the properties which I can edit will appear as text inputs. You can see you can't edit the URLs. And if there are available properties to add, clicking Add Property will display them. In this case, it looks like we do have properties we can add. 
name, description, creator. Some of these probably are limited to one property per type or one input per property. And if you do try to add a property that has limits, the interface will let you know. And if I want to add one of these properties, simply clicking it will open a text box so I can input information for that property. I can also delete this framework from here by choosing the trash button on the bottom left, and that will delete the framework. And that's how you edit framework details. You might also notice down at the bottom right that there is some information about this framework. I can see that it's been updated on a specific date, that it was approved by someone on a specific date, and that it has not yet been published. I can approve this framework by clicking the Approve Selected Frameworks button, and that will ask me if I'm sure. I can go ahead and say yes I am sure, and now I'll have the option to actually publish this framework. Clicking Publish will ask me the same thing. In this case, I'm not going to publish this framework right now, but that is an option down in the bottom. There are also two more options at the top of your framework editor. One is a export option, which you can select an export format to export the framework if you have export permissions, and a share option, which will enable you to copy the link to the specific framework to provide to other people or to create relationships elsewhere. And the undo is used to undo one change at a time in the interface. Editing competencies is much like editing framework properties in the framework editor. I've opened a new framework, NHA Certified Electronic Health Record Specialist. This is the first framework we imported using the copy-paste workflow. And here I can see if I hover over competencies, that same editing button is going to appear on the right side. If I click that editing but editor button, the edit competency modal opens up and I can see the competency text displayed at the top. And I have some options down at the bottom. I can delete the competency. I can remove it from the framework, which means it will still exist in the system, just not in this framework. I can export it to some various formats, just a single competency or I can click Add Property to choose a new property to add to this competency. In the Adding Property section, there are two, li two list views, the list view or the grid view. The grid view shows less information, but more names in one screen. The list view shows the full, almost the full details of that specific property. I'm gonna choose Competency Label, and when I click Competency Label, it's gonna open up the Adding Property with that specific property and a text input to add to that property for this competency. I'm just gonna type in an arbitrary name for now, and I'll hit Save Property, and now that new Competency Label appears in the Edit Competency modal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Done, and now we can see this Competency Label appears in the editor. Okay. Next, we can drag items and move them within the framework. While hovering over a competency on the right side, you'll see a little arrow icon that indicates you can move that competency. Holding that down, while the orange border appears, I can move that item within the framework. I can nest it under an item, and now an arrow will appear to indicate that there is more information for that competency, which I can collapse or expand. Clicking undo will undo one change at a time, and it just undid that move. And that is a very helpful way for moving things around in your framework, especially if you're manually creating them. I can also move items by selecting, clicking the copy button, make sure copy, there we go. 
going to collapse this. And now I'm going to paste here. And you can see it's pasted it underneath the parent item, provide support to patients, since I had that option selected. And since I had copy selected, the original item is still here in the original position. Clicking undo will undo that change. Now our hierarchy is returned to normal. I'm going to unselect both of these. Now select verify patient identifiers again. I'm going to select cut this time. And now the item has disappeared. I'm going to select a competency and say I want to paste it there. Now it appears underneath coordinate patient workflow within the facility. Again, I can click undo and undo that single change. Also, while I have one item selected, I can choose to delete this single item or I can choose add a child. If I choose add a child, it's gonna ask me if I wanna search for competencies within the system or create a new one from scratch. I'm gonna choose create new and now the edit competency modal has opened up with a um, new competency in the competency text, which will display until I've changed that name. I'm just gonna call this child competency and I'll hit done. And now it added that single element as a child to verify patient identifiers. And again, I can hit undo and There we go. I think it needs to undo two in that case because it had created the competency and then attached it to that item. And if we don't have anything selected in the editor, we can choose add competency at any time. And it'll give us those same two options, create new or search competencies. I'm gonna choose create new again. done. And you'll see that that is placed at the bottom of the framework. My new competency right here at the end. So if you have an option selected, you can choose where that competency will go by using the add child button. Not edit multiple in that case because that's several I'm selecting. Add child. And if you don't have anything selected, then add competency places the competency at the end of the framework. And again, clicking undo. You'll see it undid that to new competency because that's the uh, default name for that competency when it's created. If I click undo again, now that's gone. Last, we're going to go over the crosswalk tool, which is used for creating alignments between competencies into distinct frameworks. From the frameworks page, at the top we have our three options, create new framework, import framework and crosswalk. We're going to choose crosswalk tool and just for a heads up, these options are also available in the left panel if you're on another page. So we'll choose crosswalk and in the crosswalk tool there are four steps. Select source, select target, align frameworks, save and review. For select source A, this is a framework that we need to have ownership of and that's because we need to have ownership or editing capabilities on at least one of the frameworks. Um, that's because the frameworks need to save these relationships to one of the frameworks or both of the frameworks. So this is our way of ensuring that you are set up to successfully save these relationships. I'm going to search for a framework, Education Design Lab 21st Century Skills. And for the target, I'm going to search for building blocks. There it is. And in the crosswalk tool, one thing that's really helpful is if there are already relationships built in between these frameworks, those will be visible. So in this case, I had previously added some alignments to relationships that are real between these two frameworks. 
and I'm going to add a new one to show you what this looks like. But before that, I'm going to show you some helpful tools in this interface. At the top here on the left, there is a link icon that is used to show only the aligned items. If I click that, the list view returns only the items with relationships added. If I choose the unlink button, it shows only the options or the competencies in this framework that do not have relationships assigned to this framework on the right. If I choose the list view, it'll show me all of them again. And because I haven't started building relationships yet, I still can choose to swap either of these frameworks out by choosing change source. Once you start adding relationships, this option will disappear or become disabled. And those options are available on both of the lists. So I'm on list view for each of these and I am going to collapse these to help myself stay organized a little bit. And I'm going to start with initiative in the 21st century. I am going to add a relationship here. So I'll click add. And when you click add, a little orange outline appears and your relationship options appear. So choosing that drop down will show me the available relationships. I'm going to choose narrow alignment in this case. And now that I have an alignment option selected, the right side becomes enabled to add relationships. I am looking for accept responsibility for one's own decisions and actions for those of one's group, team, or department. I'll choose plus, and now that's prepped to be added. It has a little orange check mark, and it shows me I can apply these alignments. And that's going to apply them to your safe list of alignments to add to the framework you can write to. So I'll just go ahead and choose apply alignments. And now it shows me I'm adding one alignment. And if I wanted to stop here, I could go ahead and choose save and review. And it's going to show me I have one alignment ready to add. And in this case, I can edit either of these frameworks. So I can save these relationships to both frameworks or only one of them by unchecking one of these boxes. In some cases, you might only have access to one and one will be disabled and you can't select it. If I wanted to save the alignments, I would just go ahead and choose save alignments here. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and show you what one of these frameworks looks like after it's been published and alignments have been made. So this is Education Design Lab, 21st Century Skills from Education Design Lab, their framework. And it's been published and it has lots of alignments made. There's lots of information here, information here about this framework. The competencies as text. You can see it's not editable like in the editor. All the properties that we added if they have information available. And this is where those relationships are. So we can see that collaboration has a lot of relationships to that building blocks Department of Labor framework. And the competencies within that also have some alignments made. And we can keep scrolling, see all of the alignments that have been created between these two frameworks. And in this case, there might be other frameworks too, but this one was aligned to the Department of Labor. And down at the bottom, there is a JSON-LD button. And if I click that, it's going to open up the actual raw metadata information for this framework. So this is all the information that we've seen in the editor and in this view here, but as the actual um, JSON metadata. So does the URL, the ID, and all that information as it is. So this is what's ingested across systems. This is what can be connected to. This is the, the raw metadata. And that is what an aligned and published framework looks like in Credential Finder, Credential Publisher. And the last thing I'll show you is um, right now the documentation link isn't updated on the side navigation, but it should be up very soon. So this should be available by the time you're seeing this. This will be an icon here to direct you to the documentation. And the documentation looks like this. There is some introduction about what some pages might have, but the most helpful components will be 
managing frameworks. You can see a lot of the topics we've gone over are here. Sorting and filtering frameworks, adding competencies, configurations if you have access to them. But the main thing that will be helpful to you is the actual editing frameworks, sorting, filtering when you're searching for things within the system. The crosswalk tool also has a guide. And if you're using taxonomies or concept schemes, they'll be available here also.